From the first moment you open Kena Bridge of Spirits, you can tell you're about to venture off into a visually beautiful journey. As you make your way through the intro level and into the main storyline, the beauty and care put into this game shines through. There is a bit of magic to the presentation of it all. That's not to say there aren't some missteps here and there, but those missteps pale compared to the great experience Kena Bridge of Spirits provides to the player. Now a bit of a preface, preface? I'm well aware this review is way late. The value I'm hoping this review provides is to those who may be looking for a new PS5 game and have had their eye on it for a while, or maybe you've stumbled upon it while it was on sale like I did and want more information on what you're getting into based on the game's current state rather than its launch state. Okay, so let's get into it. And to start, we'll go over the positives. There are three positives I'd really like to call out here that I think primarily contributed to the experience I had with the game. The first, which I've talked about already, is the graphical fidelity and art style. The game is crisp, clean, and visually stunning. Uh, the developer, Ember Labs, clearly drew inspiration from the artistic styling of Pixar Studios for this game, and its efforts were well executed. A note to add is that Ember Labs actually began, or is still, an animation studio in addition to developing Kena. The intentional and distinct use of color to contrast corrupted versus uncorrupted nature works well. And this is especially true when you use Kena and her rot buddies, which are like these cute little lemming guys, to clear an area of corruption and you see nature return to its true form its pure form with vivid green trees and blue skies. The traumatic transition makes for nice feedback to the player that your actions are indeed making an impact on the world. To go along with graphical fidelity, I'll just throw this in there. The game runs at 60 frames per second with very minimal variance. I will emphasize that this should be the expectation, but based on my previous two impression reviews, you can see here, uh, there appears to be a healthy amount of developers and publishers that haven't received the memo yet, but I'm glad Ember Labs has. The next positive I'll talk about is the narrative slash theme of the game. Kina is a spirit guide, which means, as you can probably guess, her primary duty is to shepherd restless spirits beyond the veil of Earth and on to the great beyond. These restless spirits are what's corrupting the land around you, and thus you must dispose of them in order to bring balance back to the land and bring peace to the departed. Playing this game immediately made both Spiritfarer and Hellblade's Senua Sacrifice flash to mind. Now I know at first mention that sounds ridiculous, as tonally, these games are nowhere near close. However, both of these games deal with the subjects of loss and death and how that transition not only affects those that move on but also those that remain. I would say tonally this game shifts much more towards Spiritfarer's direction. The themes of choice, regret, and greed are all explored within the game's chapters. Each of these chapters having a main antagonist whose story you must unveil before being able to face them as a boss where you can quell their anger and misfortune and bring them solace. The stories are emotional. Now, they may not be Last of Us Part 1 intro emotional, but they tug at the heart in a way that feels genuine. We have all experienced loss. It's hard. It can feel lonely. But hopefully we grow to understand that losing someone we love means we had them, if only for so long. But enough pontificating, the third positive I'll give this game is how well it progresses and diversifies your abilities as well as enemy types. Uh, throughout my nearly 10 hours with the game, it felt like there was a good pace of introducing new mechanics and then corresponding puzzles or enemies that would require me to use said newfound skills. So for instance, once you gain the bow ability, you're confronted with, I'll call them fire monkeys and fire moths. Uh, both of which rely on you using your bow to dispatch of them effectively. 
add on top of this that the combat is well it's not dark souls but kind of right <laughs> uh, that's another point of inspiration for this game so overall the combat doesn't break new ground but it was compelling enough to keep me going on to the not so positives there are really two major ones that I would say crept up every now and then, disrupting an otherwise great experience with this game. One, the puzzles. Myself, Jaboy, I'm not into puzzles, all right? I don't hate them, just don't dig them. Kina has puzzles, quite a bit. And that isn't the problem. The issue is more so how I feel the frequency of the puzzles at times takes away from the pace of the game, both gameplay-wise and narratively. I mean, there would be moments where I had defeated a mini boss or discovered some big revelation and I'm moving forward with momentum and then there's a puzzle and another puzzle and then a puzzle to get to a puzzle. Again, I understand my bias here, but I feel like if there was a little less frequency and more intentionality with the puzzles, I wouldn't have had those moments where I felt like my playtime was being dragged down. My other gripe which is larger than my first, has to deal with the difficulty spikes. I would not categorize Kina as a difficult game. Sure, at higher difficulties, it can be a challenge, but nothing crazy. However, there are times in this game when the tuning feels off and the difficulty ramps up out of nowhere. Uh, these spikes are incredible at higher difficulty, and it was at a point where I needed to turn the difficulty down at certain sections so I could continue my playthrough without maddening frustration. Another tip, I would advise playing the game at higher difficulty as the lowest is really just too easy to have any kind of satisfaction from. And when you reach those tough parts, turn it down if need be. I mean, I promise there's no From Software fanboy lurking outside your window waiting to yell at you to get good. Or there could be, it's a crazy world we're living in. Lastly, I want to call out some new features Ember Labs added to the game that benefits those of us late to the party. Uh, they've added New Game Plus, which allows you to carry all of the rot, so your little lemon guys, your upgrades and abilities you earned in your initial playthrough into another run of the main storyline. Uh, they also added within this uh, new enemy types, new enemy compositions, boss battles, combat and collectibles. So there's value added for giving it another run. There's something about Kena Bridge of Spirits that makes you root for it. And it factor, magic. At first it was something I couldn't really put my finger on, but then I figured out what it is, love. From the very first time I jumped into this game, I could tell there was love. Love from the people that forged these pixels into characters we can connect with and care about. I mean, we hear it all the time in gaming. X developer, we love this game or we love this franchise, but come on, I mean, we know they don't. We can feel it. But the love put into Kina is tangible. And as Kina shows, love is a tether that connects us. It's immovable and unbreakable. And love shows us the best we can be, all while accepting us at our worst. So yeah, TLDR, Kina Bridge of Spirits is pretty dope. That's it for our review of Kina Bridge of Spirits. Let us know in the comments what you think about the game. Have you played it? Are you thinking about maybe picking it up? Also, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the Thoughts and Players podcast, where we put out weekly podcast episodes. And take a peek at our Patreon, where we offer extra and exclusive goodies. Thanks for tuning in, and hopefully, I'll catch you on the next level.